guys, um, this is essentially video one of what is going to be my uh, training vlog of my preparation for the 1K sprints in November. It's usually about the second week in November, so like the second weekend, like the 10th, 11th. Um, so yeah, so in a nutshell, um, it's going to be a, a bit of a review format, as in I'll do the week and then I'll... Um, I'll post the video and give you my thoughts and um, some insight into how the week went um, of my training to break my own world record of the 1K. Um, I'll get into a little bit how I've got to this point, um, who I am, why I'm doing it and, and what it's going to look like. So um, my name's James Hall, I um, played professional rugby um, for 10 years and uh, semi-professional two or three years either side of that um, so that was that um, you know when you're a, a full-time athlete you don't really have to think about um, constructing your own sessions um, you just have to sort of look after yourself and your body and your nutrition well, in terms of your training it's all sort of guided and, uh, and implemented for you um, and then sort of when I finished professional rugby I uh, had to have a, a year out for a quite serious knee injury. I did get back playing uh, semi-professionally for a, another year or two, but ultimately the rugby was winding down. Uh, in that time, in the time that um, I was rehabbing my knee, I found the ski erg and that was the only piece of equipment that I could do to keep my cardiovascular fitness and ultimately I, I wanted to keep my weight down, uh, I didn't want to get fat. Um, so yeah, I tried the bike. My knee wouldn't have the bike for a few months. The rower, um, that was that was pretty hard on the knee. Even walking and running, uh, especially running, uh, was was too hard on the knee. I was literally um, confined to upper body work and hobbling around for a few months. But when I got to, uh, able to tolerate my um, my own body weight and some light flexion of the knee, I found the ski erg was the best exercise. Um, for me just to keep my fitness and it just basically blossomed from there I got um, following one or two guys um, online uh, getting in some the forums and things like that and uh, having a look at the records and I found that uh, yeah I was uh, I was I was up there especially with the British records and so I got a machine at home and started training um, and broke a few of the British records and then obviously I started to look one further um, and um, started to look at world records. Um, you know, I did draw inspiration from the likes of sessions from uh, Justin, uh, peace be upon him, um, and yeah, just sort of then formulated my own coaching philosophy around training. Um, because the way I look at the, the ski erg, when I, when I make it my main focus of training is, um, if it is my main focus, I always think, what else can I do to contribute towards the machine? So obviously, you know, things like the, your strength and your size is going to play an important role. Um, your um, cardiovascular fitness on a whole, like your, um, your aerobic fitness, um, is, is, plays an important part. Um, and then just, yeah, like constructing the sessions and things like that, I just got more into it, thinking of, you know, looking at different people, different ways, started asking questions of why you would do that session and how often and how to construct your week. So, so from that, um, it led me to the point of um, the 1K sprints 2019. Um, um, yeah, I sort of started to get really serious of it as in rugby, I retired from rugby and I started to take the ski erg pretty seriously um, and then from there was born Ski Squad. So the idea behind Ski Squad was to get like-minded people in the same place on the same programme all chasing a sort of common goal. Now everyone does have their own um, you know, side objectives but Ultimately, what we try and do is rotate round all the distances. Um, we try and cater, because ultimately, if you want to be uh, known as an endurance athlete and go for the longer distances, 
you're going to have to know how to sprint at some point. So if you want to be known as uh, or chase the, the sprint distances, the short stuff, you're going to need a big base or is you're just going to burn out and not have the lactic threshold come the end of the TT. So there's always something to be drawn off uh, off both sides of the coin or you could meet in the middle and go for things like the 1K and the 2K, the 5K arguably is middle distance. And um, that's just a nice combination of being able to go fast and hard and also have the, the stamina to, to maintain it. So there's there's always try and cater something for, for everyone. Um, as I say, we, we generally follow the uh, the calendar. So we'll do the, the 1K sprints in November, then we'll go on to the, the, the Tour de Ski, which is the 500, the 5K, the 2K and the 10K. Um, and yeah that's a good one and then there's there's quite a big gap so what we've tried to do is i, I try and do is plug it with a few of our own tt so then i will embark on like a three-month program and it'll lead to um say a, a new 5k or 2k or set a program where you can sort of mix match how you want to do it um, if you want to go more endurance based or more sprint based or sort of blend the two meet in the middle and then you can select your own tt and it's it's sort of give good to give a time frame because at the end of the day um, um, it, if you don't have a sort of end goal to your plan it's it's just a wish all right you need you need a goal with a clear objective and a, a definitive time frame otherwise when are you ready you're never ready for a TT there's always something you can do there's always some interruptions but uh, having an end goal is uh, is good because no matter what you've got to get ready for it um, time ticks down you have to you have to put in the work so that's ski squad yeah so basically how ski squad works we use an app called ergzone we all get in the facebook group i'll post up the sessions for the week i'll give a, a bit of a spiel on on what's what and how to pace it and things like that i'll help you with technique um pacing uh, how to construct your week things like that drag factor um, and so what we'll do is I'll post up uh, the start of the week and uh, we'll all follow the same session. There's generally six sessions. I'd recommend you do um, at least three or four. So how the, how the week generally will, is going gonna, is gonna to work is I'll do um, a long distance piece for the aerobic sort of lactic threshold. Um, that'll generally be one true aerobic piece and one, uh, one harder piece. Uh, a medium distance that's generally you know around the the three to five k mark so the long distance might go up to 10k of uh, sort of aerobic fitness or it'll break that down into sort of like five two k's um, and go a little bit faster with some rest um, i say that it's essential we do that work for the uh, aer uh, aerobic fitness and also the lactic threshold okay if you can sustain high intensity uh, in, in high intensity work for longer your body's going to be able to flush out that lactic and, and be able to go and build up a new lactic threshold. Um, the medium distance sessions, is, uh, so there's generally two aerobic, there's two medium distance, uh, medium distance sessions. Um, they are, as I say, round about 3K to 5K. They'll generally be paced around the 2K, the 5K mark, um, interval style. So they might be things like, five one k's at two k plus eight two minutes rest they could be eight five hundreds two minutes rest at two k pace or we could go a little bit two k pace so we could go like um twelve three hundreds at um two k minus three um things like that um they're really good for anaerobic fitness um and building that sort of stamina under fatigue and then there's going to be two shorter sessions now because we're on the, the ski erg uh, 1k block um, one of those is going to be roughly your 1k pace so it's getting used to going at that pace so obviously what you you can only do 1k pace 1k you know that's that's the goal so they're obviously going to be shorter than 1k um, so they may look like two time uh, 10 times 200 meters with two minutes rest so that's just to get you used to going at, at the speed you want to be going at um obviously as the sessions go nearer we might go in a micro phase of six weeks um peak at six weeks have a little deload and, and hit the reset button um and then there's going to be an overspeed session another one of the short ones so that's going faster than overspeed but that's still controlled so i don't want you f um, on there we're not flying and just recklessly going at it it's going to be you know like um, 1k minus 3 so if you're looking at 
a 125, you'll be going at about 122, 121 pace. Um, typically you might need a bit more rest or we short the distance on those, but it's that's to get the one case, the one K pace feeling not maximal. Okay, because 1k pace obviously isn't max speed, that's more like the 100 pace. Um, um, it's to get you used to going over speed so that when it comes to the 1k, it feels a little bit more normal and it's not as panicked, a little bit more controlled. So, um, yeah, so as I say, weekly vlog. Uh, now, how I construct my programs is I have a, a loose training plan. Um, so in terms of, I'm not going to write out every session of the 12 weeks. Um, I don't believe in that. Um, I, I have done it and can do it, but they're always there as a, as a, as a guide really. You know, each week you're not going to be perfect. You're not going to be able to attempt every session. You might need more rest. Um, you might end up um, progressing quicker than you think. So you, you know, week to week I might be able to write. Um, a little bit quicker, so instead of minus two, two k pace, I might think, oh, that was pretty easy this week. I might push it to minus three, two k pace on a certain session. So yeah, it's a, it's a, there's going to be a rough, uh, a, a rough block, and then I generally tweak it week to week. Okay, every second week, um, I'll be doing like a mock TT. Um, that might be staggered in terms of something like. 700 meters at 1k pace, two minutes rest, and then finish the 300. Um, it might be four 250s with a minute. And as I, as I get closer, it might be a 750 TT, an 800 TT, um, all to get you experiencing those like pre-game nerves, you know, where psychologically you have to be, you have to be on point and ready to rock uh, at those times. So I'll, they'll generally be the end of the week. Um, won't necessarily deal load for them. Maybe take the Friday, you know, like if I do it on a Saturday, maybe take the, the Friday a little better, um, uh, a little easier, so I've got more energy for the, the Saturday sort of mock TT. Um, and then I'll be documenting things like nutrition. So I might do a day of eating, um, which will be typical uh, for me. I generally eat around about 4,000 calories a day. Um, or a little more, so I'll show you guys what I'll eat, and then the weights and any other exercise I'll include. So um, I've just come off. I was just about to do a powerlifting um, meet. Um, we're locked down here in Australia, so that got cancelled. So I'm quite lucky that I've actually done a lot of base work, which is the way I would prefer it. Because what I don't want to do is have conflicting. Um, tax on ski erg and weights. Um, you know, I want to keep my weights maintenance now, um, which is perfect for me because I've done I've done the weights before, so I'll just be ticking on with with weights. Um, others, I might suggest you do sort of a four week hypertrophy block and then go into maintenance and maybe a bit of peak. So the weights will look like probably three sessions a week with um, with a plyometric session. So uh, sorry, that one of the weight sessions is probably going to be a plyometric session. So that's going to be fast movements, um, all about force production, things like cleans, high pulls, box jumps, add some weight. So there'll be three or four weight sessions, um, and then it'll be deadlift, squat, bench, typical barbell movements, not too skier specific because um, strength carries over quite nicely. Um, and then, um, generally, um, it will just be any other. So I like to actually get a lot of my aerobic work away from the ski erg. Um, I find that too much ski erg taxes those muscles um, that we use, especially in the lower back, pretty hard. So I like to do a lot of my work uh, the base work away from the ski erg. So I've got a bike erg, so I'll probably do one or two bike erg sessions. They won't be crazy. Um, maybe a little bit of rowing and plenty of walking. I try and do about an hour's walk every day, mainly for recovery, uh, relaxation, stress relief. But also it's gonna help me sort of flush out those, those toxins and, and add a little bit of aerobic capacity. 
So that's that. I hope that you will subscribe and uh, follow me on this 12 week journey. Um, what I'm going to do as well is a section where if you ask a question in the comment, I might do a weekly Q&A at the end. Um, so ask any questions in the comments, I'll uh, get back to you on them if they're appropriate. But that's it. I hope uh, I've sort of started this week, so I'll, I'll, uh, as in um, started lightly, building my way in, and then I'm going to really hit the hit the go button next week. Okay, so I'll probably I might do a, a recap this week. Um, so stay tuned. All right, guys, I will catch you later.